I'd like to call the meeting to order. Will you please join me in the place of the flag? To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have an oath of office for the clerk to administer. At the beginning of every board meeting, the board sets aside time for the public to speak on any item they would like. Has anyone signed in? No one. Okay, having no public input. On to personnel certified. Uh, we have one item, we have one business action item that was added. Uh, Joe DePasio, our business administrator, we received some last minute information from the county, the tax, um, the tax rate has changed uh, very, very small. Uh, the, t the amount of the tax levy has not changed. So Joe has a recommendation that we just approve the revised tax rate information. Uh, the board should have that. That just came late Friday afternoon. Okay, do we have a motion to approve? Motion, motion to approve. I'll second. Any questions or comments? All in favor of the new tax levy, please raise your right hand. And Vern, please say yay or nay. My right hand is raised in approval. <laughs> And personnel certified. Recommendation that uh, board approve for instrumental music, effective September 1st. Um, Eric Valalta at step one, master's degree, effective September 1st, 2021. Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. Any questions or comments? All in favor of the teaching appointment, please raise your right hand. Vern, please uh, voice your And that's unanimous. Approved. Okay. Thank you. A recommendation that you accept the resignation of James Mapes, special education teacher, effective August 12, 2021. I'll second. Any questions or comments? Uh, I just did that. I thought he was very good. It was a shame we lost him, but I understand why he left. Any other questions or comments? All in favor? I think, Jim, I think Jimmy does a wonderful job of connecting with the kids, and uh, we're, wherever he continues to go, I wish him the best of luck. Right. All in favor of accepting the resignation, please raise your right hand. And Vernon, please verbalize your vote. I accept. The recommendation that you approve the teacher aides, there's four of them there as listed, along with recommendations from the principal. 
Motion to approve is printed. Any questions or comments? All in favor of the four teacher aids as printed, please raise your right hand. Burn, please verbalize. Approve. Okay, recommendation that you accept the resignation of Wendy Panici uh, from teacher aid effective August 12th. She will be placed on our subject list. Motion to approve. Any questions or comments? All in favor of the resignation, please raise your right hand. And firm, please verbalize. I accept. Unanimous. Okay, uh, program action, recommend, as you saw uh, from two weeks ago, recommendation that you formally approve the 21-22 strategic plan, um, as you heard two weeks ago. Motion to approve. I'll second. Questions or comments? Go ahead. Go ahead. Yes, we to thank the people that were involved, including the board members. I think it was two long days of all the activities to come up with some changing and thinking ideas. And Harold and um, Derek were involved, and just want to thank them for being involved in that. I just wanted to. Uh, Make clear that this is an add on, not a replacement. For Correct. The strategic plan Correct. Correct. So that uh, we're not throwing out right. the point of view of the bathroom. Right. So, very good. Any other questions or comments on the strategic plan? All in favor of accepting a plan, please raise your right hand and ver verbalize, please. I accept. And it's unanimous. And now we're going to take up the 2021-2022 Health and Safety Plan for COVID-19. Mr. Smith. Yeah, thank you. Just give me one second. And Vern, can you see that? Um, I'm not looking at it, but I pulled the plan up that you have under board docs. I mean, I am looking at it. Thank you. All right, so this is the... Um, Draft reopening plan. Uh, it's short and sweet, and I'm going to begin with some talking points. Dr. Johnson is here as well. Um, I'll give him some opportunity to speak as well. So before we get into the plan itself, I have several key points up there. Of course, the plan itself is subject to change pending any potential mass mandates from uh, New York State. Our understanding is uh, when Governor Holcomb takes office that there could be a mass mandate leaning towards that direction. Um, various sources are telling me that's probably going to happen. So that could change. I may recommend we hold off on anything with masking until we find out uh, what the governor says, the governor to be says. Second point, uh, the state education and CDC have given no directives. Uh, the only directive we have been given that we had to follow is masking on school buses. That falls under the order of CDC because it's public transportation, but they do have the right to issue that. So masks are required on school buses, but thus far there have been no directives given to schools outside of masking on school buses. Third point, um, whether we do masking or not, um, is a whole, whole different conversation, but a fact is, same with also vaccinations, a fact is if students are masked 24 seven, I'm not advocating that necessarily, but if students are masked 24 seven, uh, the chances, I should say changes, it says changes, I should say chances, it reduces the chances of health department quarantine. So in other words, if I'm sitting in math class with a mask on, and Chris is sitting in math class with her mask on, she has COVID, she's exposed, I'm exposed to her, the chances of me having to go into quarantine are you know, very, very small. If I'm, if I'm on mask and she's on mask, and she has COVID, I'm gonna be in quarantine for up to 10 days. Okay, those are the facts from the health department. Same with the vaccinations. Obviously we cannot, we cannot you know, require vaccines, but the, going forward, we need to understand, as I said last time, having the mask on all the time uh, will, will reduce the chances of students being in 
quarantine. Not eliminate it, but significantly reduce the chances. Just a quick question. Uh, is the state telling us there is scientific proof that a mask is more safe than a vaccine? The state is telling us the state is recommending masks. They're not telling so us. They're the telling state, us the state is recommending they, masks. There is some sort of scientific evidence that the mask is safer than having a vaccine. If you're telling that, if you're telling us that, I think they would have the evidence to back it up. But I'm telling you, the facts are right now that if we had masks on, students will not quarantine. The draft plan I have, based on the feedback, does not call for that. But just want you to understand going in. The second, I'm sorry, go ahead. What happens when you have a, a student that's vaccinated and not wearing a mask? Are they going to end up on quarantine? Same thing. So if, if they are vaccinated, uh, the chances of having it's just the exact same point. Yeah. If, if, if I'm vaccinated and, and I'm unmasked, uh, the chances of being quarantined have been reduced. The other point, too, I, I got this question today uh, from a parent. If my child is on quarantine, what's going to happen to remote learning? We're not going to offer remote learning, uh, but if we have a number of students who are on quarantine, like it happened down south, uh, that then begs the question, do we have to pivot them back to full remote learning for those students, which then pivots a staffing issue. So just keep that in mind. We can have a discussion when we get to it, but that's just something that we need to be aware of going forward. You know, again, it's a local decision. I just think it's important that we know the facts going in prior to making a decision. We will continue with the temperature screening as we have in the past, and we'll continue to use the, the different barriers as well. These are simply proactive steps. The plan has been developed in concert with Orleans Niagara BOCES and the four other schools in our in our county, there are some slight variations, but it's generally the same. And again, remote learning will only be offered with documented medical reasons for students. So we're not we're not um, offering you know, remote learning. This is true across the region as well. So the plan itself. So we have uh, four zones. Okay, blue zone, yellow zone, orange zone, and red zone. At the red, we're at the highest. Right now, my understanding is we're in the orange zone here. So across the board, instructional delivery, five days a week, that hasn't changed. We've always been five days a week. Five days a week, okay, three feet of spacing and as much as possible in each classroom. That, that's across the board, no changes there. No opportunity for remote instruction. School bus masking, including athletics, Chris and I had asked about this last time, mandated we have to have the masks on the buses. The plan that we have now, um, and again, I would recommend that and maybe we hold off on this until we see what the guidance is or the direction is from the state. We have masking across the board in common areas, hallways, okay, primarily, um, and when kids are more than okay, three feet apart, less than, less than three feet apart. Um, classroom masking, you can see across the board, here and here, in all cases, it is recommended, but not, but not, but not um, required then I have likely mandated per discussion with the county health department. It's not mandated yet. It says likely to, to be mandated if the health department thinks we should. Again, the only part where masking is across the board is in the common area. So that's that. Again, I would recommend perhaps your whole lot on masking until we have more information. The second page cafeteria, essentially the same plan we had last year. We we're going to have kids eat outside, uh, use, a, use a different plastic barriers as well. Uh, PE, again, the same plan we had we had last year. Uh, masking is recommended, but not not, not mandated. Uh, band and core, same pieces. Recommended, but not required as far as masking goes. We'll continue with the daily in-school temperature checks. We'll continue with the deep cleaning. I will not issue a daily updates, or as they happen, updates positive cases. They simply will be posted on the website. Uh, third point, remote learning is not to be offered unless a documented medical reason has been offered by the student or by the school's doctor or by, by their doctor to be looked at by our doctor. Classroom and cafeteria barriers will be used and we will only use a daily employee health screening as necessary. So the staff used to have to fill out a form every single day. I'm recommending that we not do that, only we do that as necessary. So that's a plan that we've been working on for the past couple of weeks, has not, have not done this in isolation, it's been in partnership with, with other schools. Again, I expect to have more information on the masking. Um, so here's the board. I know Dr. Johnson would like to say some pieces on this. No, you're good? Okay. All right. So um, we can adopt this. We can have conversation about it. I'd like to hear your thoughts. Jason, can I ask a quick question? Yes. 
last year at the end of this year, we had all of our students were required to wear masks all day. Correct. At the end of the school year, if a kid tested positive for quarantine, did all the kids in the kids' class or the ones in the, within the immediate distance, even though they were required to have to wear a mask, also have to quarantine? Yes, they were. I, I, I'm recalling. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's what I was trying to remember. That's why I kind of don't really we had talk to the, that they're telling us that. Yeah. You know, we they're had, saying, well, if they're wearing masks in classroom, oh, well, you know, if they're wearing a mask, they're not going to have to quarantine just because someone else tested positive when that's 180 degrees what they did last If memory last serves, spring. Yeah, if memory serves, I have to go back and look at my um, updates. I don't think we had a positive case in May and June when the masking mandate uh, happened. And if we did, it, would, it was perhaps a staff member or something that did, that did not result in contact tracing. So I don't think we had any cases in May and June um, that, that would have, have resulted in contact tracing. It went down quite a bit. So what, but what, they're telling it, now, what they're telling me now is, is if you have a mask on, uh, the chances of quarantine are reduced, are, are reduced uh, significantly. We had to go back it and did ha It did happen last summer. I know for a fact it did because I had to reschedule Little League because we had to push, we had one team that lost five kids on a team. We had to start them a whole week later because all those kids were in the same classroom. And it was our, it was our fifth grade boys last year. Okay. Well, like I said, you know, I, I'm I, not going to disclose any more than that, but. Yeah, I understand. The information I have as of six hours ago from Paul Petter was that, that they will not be, and he's going to be issuing the school in New Park this week that will say that. You know, Steve wanted to say something. Yeah, I, I guess okay. I thought that it took 15 minutes to transmit COVID. So why if, are the kids hanging out in the hallways for 15 minutes at a time? So why are we requiring masks in the hallways? Common practice, best practice. It's a it's a uncongregated area. It's a fair point. Um, just there's 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 obviously that they can't keep the six feet the six feet apart in the hallways. Same process that they used last year. And the other thing is that this um the high transmissions. The, even back at the peak of COVID, Linneville never ever had anywhere near the amount of cases as the larger towns in our county. So I don't really agree with um, changing the mask mandate, even in the classrooms, when we get to that point. Okay. It just seems overkill. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to ask the doctor, um, the, if you're in the halls for two to three minutes and they say in 15 minutes, I mean, it seems like you know, it's a pretty good math. Are these kids uh, going to be exposed to a high level at that point, would you say? I, I think what they're saying right now is length of exposure and proximity. So the closer you are and the longer you are. So right now what they're saying is for the healthcare care worker, it has to be in the range of 18 inches to 2 feet for 15 minutes. So I don't know if anybody's going to stand in the hall for 15 minutes you know, within 18 inches of somebody. So I think the chances of those kids contracting that uh, are pretty small. There's one study out there that was done in Holland that showed that school uh, K through 12 do not show any significant increase in the community spread of COVID. That's the only study that I could find that had been done during the COVID era. And I'm not sure you're aware that Albion announced they are going maskless. Well, until until they get the edict. So they're, they're they're holding off. I'm aware they are holding off on well, any I changes. Yeah. Yeah. Until the governor yeah. says yeah. they're going to have to wear masks. Yeah. It may be a blue point at this point. It, right. That's what I'm saying. We may want to adopt this plan as is, and then leave out the piece on masking until something comes down. Um, that obviously is the most controversial thing that every school has faced. Um, the only place we have no room uh, for any um, conversation really is, is on the bus. That, that is a mandate. We'll see what happens this week with the masking. Uh, but the rest of the plan looks very similar to what we had last year, including the use of the cafeteria. Um, and we can, when we can hold off on school doesn't start for, for another two and a half more weeks. So, Steve? I, th I think we should vote on it tonight, regardless of what the state sends down, so that our, all of our constituents know exactly where we stand on the issue. I think it, I, I don't want to, I don't think we should hide from it. 
with the understanding that we will abide by the state guidelines, but with with um with in not in that we are not in favor of it. Correct. Put that on record. Well, so if, if you vote on this, are you uh, do you want to vote on it as it is now? Or Absolutely not. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So let's let's talk about the change. I would say, in my opinion, the common area is changed to recommend it. And um, we also changed the high transmission um, to recommend it as well. Let the parents decide. If you're worried about it, wear a mask. If you're not worried about it, don't wear a mask. Is that a motion? Do I make a motion to, to uh, you know, okay. We have to make a motion. I make a motion that we change the uh, health and safety guide for COVID-19 for this year in changing the common areas to recommended instead of required, and also the high transmission rate to recommended but not required. Excluding buses. Ex excluding, excluding buses. So, uh, in the high transmission, you're talking about the classroom masking? Yes. Correct. Okay. I'll second that. Any questions or comments? All in favor of the proposed change? Opposed? Vern? In favor. So, pass the one. So, all right, I'll make those changes as you requested. Okay, let's, let's talk a little bit about um, whether or not we want to vote on the entire plan or the entire plan man minus masking with the pending gover governor's decision potentially tomorrow. And I know Steve, Steve's in favor of voting on the whole thing. I'd like to hear the other members' thoughts. I am in favor of putting on the record what our preference is, and I believe that parents should decide. I don't believe that um, it's our place to decide on vaccines or whether they wear a mask at all times. However, I would respect the governor's direction or edict that we not break that because it could be detrimental to funding or whatnot that we get for the school, but I'm opposed to her making our decision, and I'm in favor of putting it on the record as well. Although I do have more questions with regard to some of the smaller little details. Okay. Anybody else on whole, whole plan or whole plan minus masking for tonight? I'd like to second Sue's sentiment. I agree. With Sue. Okay. So that's a the question on the masking on the buses, is that a state Department of Health thing or is that a federal? Department? So it's federal, Harold, because it's a public transportation, just as the CDC can ask for it on airplanes and buses, um, trains, same thing. So that that is a federal. Um, and that's mandated they can by regulate the Department of Health. Centers, who's centers, not a doctor. centers for Disease Control is who is coming out from. And she's not a doctor, right? I don't. So there is going to have to be masking on the buses. So Steve's motion was approved to modify the masking piece, and we're so now we're and we'll and we'll take the entire plan as is. You're asking me to tell me, telling you, okay. And Sue, so you had some additional questions. You want? To? I had a quick question. Maybe Dr. Johnson can answer this. Um, the sports and extracurricular activities. This is a difficult one for me. Um, because we have children that are obviously healthy, they're playing sports, they don't generally have any already diseases already that make them maybe um, more at risk. And I think that those masks during a soccer game or a wrestling event or whatnot are, do more harm than good. I mean, I don't know what good they would do if you're all ganked up with snot and sweat and everything and you're trying to play. Um, so I have a question on your opinion on that. And my second question is, this is a little more complicated. People, it says here, people who are fully vaccinated can refrain from quarantine following a known exposure if they are asymptomatic, facilitating continued participation in in-person learning, sports, and extracurricular activities. So I'm not sure why this is so. So say we have a kid in a classroom that is vaccinated. Someone 
no one's wearing masks and they're all separated appropriately, someone does test positive for COVID with um, symptoms and everyone's required to quarantine except the vaccinated child. But I, my understanding is that vaccines will protect that child. However, they can still be carriers and remain asymptomatic. So say that vaccinated child has no, he's not currently a carrier of the COVID symptoms and he is exposed at school by someone who is a carrier. He, his level, hopefully his protection level is much higher, but he's still a carrier. So he's gonna still be walking around the school unvaccinated and potentially expose other people and not be under the quarantine because he's vaccinated. That doesn't make sense to me. Is yeah, that? It, it should. Okay, To speak to your you. first question, your first question about the mask, um, we presented this data last year mm -hmm. that all masks across the board from the N95 down to a single layer of cloth are only 11% efficient stopping transmission. Um, the second problem with that is kids aren't going to follow the rules. Every time you touch your mask or touch your face, you should change your mask, and, and they're not doing it. Anytime a cloth mask or a paper mask gets moist, it should be changed. So your part about these kids in sports games, and athletics and things, you know, with the perspiration and things like that, you're going to have masks that are almost counterproductive and more likely to transmit the disease than if they weren't wearing a mask at all. Your second point about vaccinations. The average lifespan of antibodies from a vaccine is about five to six months. It's six months we're starting to see a significant drop off in the quantity of the antibody and the quality. At seven or eight months, they're almost not measurable. Hence, that's why all of a sudden now you need to have a booster. Anybody that was vaccinated before January, in January, is going to be probably required now to get a booster in September. The reason the government can now mandate vaccination is because the FDA yesterday approved the vaccine and it gave it FDA approval. Now, normally, FDA approval for any vaccine or any drug takes a minimum of three years. But due to the fact that they approved this under emergency authorization, they were allowed to get it out in nine months and they were allowed to forego the nine months of animal trials and go right to human trials with an MRA vaccine, the Pfizer and the Moderna that have never been used in human studies before. Um, so, I, I guess, you know, when you say someone's vaccinated, the, the literature is out there and you can look it up. If you are vaccinated and you're within the time frame of having a vaccine, it doesn't matter whether it's the Moderna or whether it's the Johnson & Johnson. Fully vaccinated people have a chance of dying at 0.0005%. Your chance of dying from a lightning strike is 0.0007%. That's the data. You're more likely to die from a lightning strike than for COVID if you're vaccinated. So the only other study that I could find was the Denmark trial, which looked at masking. Uh, the results of that came up that social distancing, hand washing, and good hygiene were far better and more efficient than any masking. The trial that they did is they masked everybody, and the outcome of that was that they had um, 2.1% 2, 2, 2 or 1.8% of the mask group uh, got sick, and 2.1% of the control group that was unmasked got sick. That is not statistically significant. So the trial they did of over 6,000 people shows that the masks really have no impact. And people will say, well, what are you talking about? We know masks help. There have been zero trials anywhere to show that masks reduce the outcome in a pandemic. And everybody will sit here and say, well, you don't know what you're talking about because if I sneeze into my mask, 
my sneeze will be contained in my mask and it won't go six feet. That, that's true. That, that study is a true study, but it has never been statistically proven by research in a pandemic that masking helps. You're going to say, well, what about the Spanish flu epidemic? Spanish flu epidemic, the majority of the people that died during the Spanish flu epidemic died of bacterial pneumonia, not the Spanish flu. They got sick because of the Spanish flu, but the cause of death was usually a bacterial diagnosis, bacterial pneumonia, prior to the development of antibiotics. Um, and everybody quotes that as saying, well, why we should use masks. So I, I think the point about let's let the parents decide, I think is reasonable. I think they rushed the FDA approval here so that they can now mandate it specifically for the military. Now the military, which was like 43% vaccinated, will have to go to 100% vaccination. And this FDA approval now allows them to mandate it in schools and things like that. Do we know what percentage of our teachers administration is vaccinated? I, a high percentage, can't tell exactly, but it's a, it's a decent amount because we have several staff, four allowed staff to take advantage of the vaccine and then everywhere in us we have a part. So, it's high and high, I can't yeah. even get I'm working And I mean, that's the vulnerable or let's say more vulnerable population. The students uh, probably have a very, very low risk. We, we know that from looking at the data not someone's opinion. And I think the difference is when you're listening to all this stuff, you know, certain doctors can give you their opinion and that's fine, but that's all that it is, it's opinion. If you listen to someone else, their opinion may be equally as valid as the other guys. There's no data out there to suggest that most of what these people are imposing on you is scientifically significantly proven to be a, a benefit. Thank you. Any other questions from the members on the plan? Oh, the other question I have is says school bus masking, and then under it says including athletics. Does that mean on the school bus to the athletic event? Yes. And it has nothing to do with the athletic event. Correct. Okay. So the first sure. is correct. Oh, not, right. not to get back the to and from practices, to and from games. Good question. And uh, my other thing is, we wrestled a whole season last year, and you can't get any closer than wrestlers do. And we had uh, the whole wrestling community, we had nobody that came down with COVID. So I don't know why that is. They said it was a high, based on no science at all, they said it was a high transmission rate. And yet there was probably five or six schools and basketball teams that were quarantined because of the transmission of COVID. So I, 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 the people are telling me about science, aren't using science, and until they use science, I don't trust them. No. Hey, Ted, can I ask a quick question? Absolutely. Wonderful. Um, it's kind of two-part, and I think Dr. Johnson can probably help us the most. Um, one of the things that I've wanted to know about, especially with the masks, is kids or teachers that have already had COVID-19 and recovered because there's an incredibly rare chance of contracting it again. Do these kids, are, they're not, are they going to be... Um, are they going to be required to be quarantined if they're near someone that was diagnosed? Are they going, or in a sporting event, or on a bus when they're already recovered? Can we, is it, should we put an allowance in the plan that would protect the kids and the staff that have already had COVID-19 and recovered? So I can speak to that. Dr. Johnson can speak to the medical side of it, but uh, the direct answer to your question, Vern, is no, we can't do that because that's not a decision we get to make. That decision is always made and only made by the health department. So we bring that information forward if the student or the teacher or, or you know, if they already had COVID, if they've been vaccinated, those decisions are always placed in the hands of the health department. So we cannot, I, I mean, we can, but it, honestly, with all due respect, it, it would be pointless to have that in the plan because we have, we have no control over it. 
just like just like the masking changes. So um, I can't speak to the medical side as well as I can to the health department side, but um, that's information that we would offer to the health department if we're given the information. They then make that decision. Can I add anything to that? Thank you, Jason. Be uh, considered vaccinated unless you get the vaccine, whether you have the illness or not. But contracting COVID naturally uh, confers better immunity. We know this, they confer better immunity than the vaccinations we have. And we know that the T helper cells and the B cells that you have, which are your memory cells, so when you get re exposed to the antigen again, you have a much quicker response if you were exposed to COVID naturally versus through the vaccine. But I believe the position of the government and the state is going to be, no, you need to be vaccinated. What they're recommending right now is if you had COVID, you should wait 90 days and be vaccinated. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make medical sense, but that's who's kind of running the position right now. Thank you very much. Any other questions or seeking answers to, uh, regarding the plan? So I just want to go back to the sports thing again. So according to our plan, if the soccer, say there's a soccer game, everybody's got to be masked. No, there, okay, is, no, there is no athletic requirements right now. Section five or six, section five or six may come down with something. They haven't yet. We had practice. I saw the pictures on the hub, hub this morning. You know that Tom had uh, that those students across the county were not masked. So there is no mandate right now for that. Um, that could change. It w whether the uh, NISFA, the you know the statewide organization, comes up with something as as they did did last year, but there are no rules on spectator limits and masking those types of things we can say as steve has said that you know if you're not vaccinated we recommend you wear a mask we did that for our um, graduation ceremony in june we had signs posted and that's what we did uh, but there has been no guidance yet from the state there, well there has been guidance but there have there have been no directives from the state on um, sports okay so one last thing um and maybe dr johnson can add to there's now these rapid tests that you can actually get to go over to another country like mm -hmm. and i'm just as far as their effectiveness do we have access to those because yeah. of the kids coming in maybe we're not sure but then we don't want to have to miss a couple or three or five or ten days of school i can speak to that we have the tests we have right now are expired we're going to be getting more last spring and winter we gave the tests um, often to our staff um, we, we gave a 50 minute rapid test. I, we do need parent permission to give them to the students, um, but, but we are authorized as a lab. Uh, so Mary has given those tests. Um, they've been used. I mean, we actually ran out. Um, so we have several of the rapid tests that we have. At, uh, so yeah, so if we, if we had a staff member who maybe they were like what we call it, a uh, secondary contact, they were a contact of a contact and they were kind of concerned, I w would always tell Mary, go ahead and give them the you know, test. In one case this year, we had a staff member um, use a test, and uh, they were they were diagnosed positive. So it has been helpful to get the staff, you know, diagnosed. Um, but that was the one time we had it happen this year. Staff member was a contact of a contact, and he was um, positive due to the fact that we had the test in the office. And we are authorized as a lab. Dr. Johnson helped us out that last year, and we paid the fee. So we are still authorized as a lab to give the tests. Anyone else with any questions? So we need a motion to approve the revised plan. And again, summarizing, um, we've updated a common area mas masking transitions to recommended but not required across all four um, transmission zones. And in addition, under the high transmission zone, under classroom masking, um, that has been updated to recommended but not required. So members clear on that modified plan? Yes, and just one last thing, just to clarify, so parents are wondering, um, how, are, how are they notified and how often is that updated? And so if there's someone that, you know, hopefully the parents will go oh, find themselves as far as the, the color, and where would they get that information? Are you yeah. updated daily it's, on that? It's updated weekly uh, through the health department. Uh, we are one of my colleagues tracks that through the uh, CDC. Last time I checked, we were orange. Um, honestly, if, the, if this plan gets approved as written, 
uh, there really wouldn't be. I mean, yes, we should pay attention to it, but if we go from blue to yellow to orange, there's not going to be any changes. But um, that would be helpful for parents to be able to make that decision and have confidence that correct. their child right. will be matched or whatever. Right. The other thing I want the board to understand, too, is my second bullet point on the back. I really want to get away from sending out real-time text updates as they happen. Um, I think we we have kind of gotten used to it. My recommendation, this is approved, there's been no other changes outside of the mask and I just simply post the information to the website in, in, in the um, COVID area and not send out the text alerts as we had to last year. The reason we did it last year is because we had to because it was in the plan. I'm recommending now that we cease doing that and just continue to, to draw attention to it through, through the weekly updates if we have any cases. And also, we're not sure, also last year our office each day had to report the number of cases in our school, both staff and students. That was that was uh, posted to a state website. Um, we have not received information if we have to do that yet either. So that was the state portal. Lori loved doing that every day. When she wasn't here, I, you know, I had to do it. We also had to report our tests. So uh, there are mechanisms in place, but I would recommend now that we avoid the uh, text updates as I had to do and we just simply post them to the website as they happen. Question, do we know what the numbers were last year? How many kids did we actually have that were tested positive for COVID? I have to go back and look at all my uh, letters, Harold. So do you, do you have a best guess, Laura? I mean, around, I don't even want to say around, less than 50, I'd say. Um, I, have to, I have to go back and look at all the letters I had. Um, I can get that information for you. The other thing I was wondering about is how many were quarantined that actually came down with it afterwards? That I can tell you is zero. Yeah. yeah. That would be science. No, I can I can also tell you this that we had no um, confirmed cases of the of the virus starting here. The the confidential conversations that you know that a nurse had with those who were positive indicated that it came from the family's workplace, a family gathering. Uh, there are no confirmed cases. I mean, people may think that, but we have no confirmed, and this is from the health department too, that there's no uh, transmission happening in, in the school. Um, people may disagree with that on principle, but again, those are the facts that our nurse has gathered. I can get you those exact numbers. Every letter I wrote is on the website as to how many cases we had. So at one point, it seemed like it was about like one or two a week. Uh, it, our first case didn't come through until the end of October. Uh, we went all September and almost all of October, and then it really did kind of slow down in May and June, um, except for the possibly the point that Vera made earlier. But um, we, you know, we hit our peak in November, December. That's why we went out for remote. So I can get you that exact information, though, Harold. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. We need a motion on the plan modified as outlined. Motion to approve. I'll second that. Any questions or comments? All in favor of the health and safety plan for COVID-19, please raise your right hand. Byrne, please verbalize your answer. Your vote. I approve. And that's unanimous. Just a final comment. I will get this plan out in the next few days uh, to our staff and to our parents uh, via the usual mechanisms. I will, of course, wait and see what happens in the next couple of days with the change in the mask mandate as well. But um, so thank you for the uh, discussion. Thank you for the civil discussion, by the way, too. If you've been following some other districts in the area, it has not been that way. So I just, just want to thank all of you for that as well. So thank you. All right. Um, I think, uh, although it's not officially on the agenda, a round table is probably um, apropos given the, to let each member uh, speak their mind regarding this uh, right before school starts. Sue, you want to start, please? Uh, just quickly, I understand that this is a complicated issue and that people's opinions vary greatly um, to the point of anger and frustration to um, I mean, we're talking about our kids, and I know people aren't always all going to be happy about this, but my goal is that each parent be allowed to make the decision for their child as much as possible, and if you choose to mask your children, that's great, and I think you should, should do what you feel is best for your children. If you choose not to, that is your decision as well, but I would ask that we would all be kind to one another and 
uh, um, respect each person or family's decision to um, carry out the way they choose to protect themselves or um, through this COVID crisis and that we just move forward doing the best we can. And I imagine that there won't be any surprises tomorrow, but that we would respect uh, the decision of our new governor, whether we like it or not, and try to help each other through it. That's all I got to say. Harold? Um, I think that this masking thing should be a personal thing between the parents and their kids. I don't think if, if you feel you need to wear a mask, wear a mask. They shouldn't be able to tell people they have to wear a mask. And where does it all start? Where does the control, where does the control let go? They, we went through this thing, just do it for 30 days. We did that with Trump. Then we went, when Biden came in, just give me 100 days. And, and we're, they're still doing it. This is 360 days later. And we're still, you know, when does it stop? I mean, uh, there's there's a virus out there. It's the RSV virus, which is killing kids. That, Doc, what would you say about the RSV virus? How much? Well, we have five other COVID viruses out there right now, which no one seems concerned about. MERS, SARS, they're all out there. It's just, this is the hot button virus. It'll, it'll run its course, it'll pass, but for some reason right now, everybody's pushing, you know, the masking and, and like I said, the most important thing is social distancing. But the one thing that I will say about masks is if you're doing a study on masks and you look at it from what's referred to as a source control study, there's marked improvement if you mask people who are sick there's no statistic significantly different masking healthy people. If people are sick and you put a mask on them, that would be beneficial. But masking healthy individuals, it shows no significance as far as the research goes. Very good. That's it. Thank you. Appreciate you, Sorry, I was trying. Sorry, I was trying to unmute it, so I didn't cause extra feedback. It's this is going to be parents' decision, and we've done surveys. We've talked to people in our community. Where we have different opinions, and I just want all the other school board members who I can't see tonight to know that we disagree at times on things, and we come together at times on things, but it doesn't miss change my opinion to guys and I think everybody here is doing the best job they can. I think I appreciate that you guys are out in your community doing what we do and trying to be leaders. I just want to thank Jason a ton for doing a lot of work on this and Lori getting us all this information and we're going to do the best we can. We have great staff. They did a wonderful job keeping that building extra clean last year and I'm looking forward to all the kids getting back in school and playing sports and just, uh, you know, seeing Lindaville come alive during the school year again. Thank you. Steve? I'm all set. Sharon? I'm all set, thank you. Alyssa? We handed out welcome back letters to families and gave teacher assignments today. We will be mailing those out for anyone that didn't pick them up. And certainly looking forward to back to school for our students. Aaron? I'm all set, thank you. Lori? Mm -hmm. We need a motion to adjourn. Make that motion. I'll second. Questions or comments? All in favor of adjournment, please raise your right hand. Burn. I approve. And that's carried. Meeting is adjourned. Have a nice night. Thank you.